Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I am incredibly excited to talk to Stephen Kessler, who is the author of the best-selling book, The Five Personality Patterns. So welcome, um, Stephen. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So we talked we talked a while ago about these five different patterns, um, leaving, merging, enduring, aggressive, and, and rigid. And before we dive deep into the information, so today we're really going to be talking about, um, I'm going to put it in the context of a work setting. So you're actually in a meeting with okay. Um, okay. different people with different patterns. And today we're going to be talking about getting clear with like, what is, what is, what it could be the, what kinds of things could be happening in the meeting that would scare that person and what kinds of things you can do when you're interacting with them to help mm -hmm. them feel safer. So um, first, let's start off with the genesis of this work. Where did this body of work come from? Actually, this started almost 100 years ago hmm. with Wilhelm Reich, who was one of the sort of star pupils of Sigmund Freud. And in the 1930s, Reich started publishing um, on, uh, he had been observing what he called uh, patterns of resistance in his clients. So he was focused on the, the behaviors that he was seeing, the ways of trying to protect themselves. And then his students developed it more in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. Uh, it gradually grew into um, bioenergetics and core energetics and um, has been taught by various people, but not a, not a great deal. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised actually, because I, I, um and maybe sort of str a strange way of thinking about it, but, you know, during COVID, uh -huh. people have been experiencing a lot of being scared, myself included. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, well, this is really interesting because what the gift of COVID is that it's helped me become really clear about um, my pattern, which is leaving. In fact, my kids are like, oh, there's mom. She's leaving again. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually tease me now. They're like, oh, there's that leaving energy. Because, you know, sitting, I just can't sit so for very long. Think about this, and they're going to be able to navigate through life having this information under their belt. That's yes. Cool. So it's actually been um, an incredible gift because yeah. I've had to work on myself to oh, yeah. actually um, feel safe myself during times of chaos and uncertainty. Yeah. And so and these have been really relevant. You're like, oh, wait a minute. I just disappeared. I yeah, just... <laughs> there's there's me leaving again. And so they tease yeah. me. They're like, mom, you can stop. You don't have to. So when things get conflictual, I just kind of, I, I may go, oh, I'm going to go get, wash the dishes. And so that's my way of seemingly doing something productive, but really yeah. just leaving because I just getting want... away from the conflict. <laughs> getting yes. away from the conflict. Yeah. So, um, so that's, so... Um, I've actually found that this material has been incredibly helpful for a lot of my clients because COVID has put us into such a state of fear and um, conflict with others uh -huh. that it, yeah. a lot of these things have been really relevant. So, um, yeah, this, I know I know people who've been teaching this in schools, some in ele elementary school, but more often in high schools. And they find that the students just love it because, I mean, in high school, like you're trying to figure out who am I and how do I fit in? That's that's the whole deal, right? Mm. And this finally gives you a map of it. Mm. Okay, got it. So so I've been doing this. So here's why I'm like thrilled beyond belief. So I'm doing this class about, and I'm heading the section about body intelligence okay. and understanding your body and how, mm -hmm. you know, our bodies are oriented towards survival. And because yep. our bodies are oriented to survival, we have certain types of armoring that we put on when we are in social situations to defend ourselves. And mm -hmm. so um, 
I wanted to introduce your work, but help me introduce your work in a better way. So that was, that's yeah. my frame. So from starting from that frame, how would you explain this work? You know, one of the simpler ways to understand it is to think of it as sort of the different people have different mother tongues. Mm -hmm. we're, we're able to understand easily, well, this person speaks French and that person speaks German and that person speaks English and that pe person speaks, I don't know, Swahili or something. Mm -hmm. We're able to get that difference. And we know automatically that if the person's mother tongue is not our own, that we can communicate more effectively if we talk to them in their own language. Mm -hmm. But we have this uh, situation in real life in which, because we live within our own patterns, and I just wanna name that people typically have two patterns, not just one. Some people even run three patterns. And that what we, you know, who you really are is your presence, your essence. But your patterns are safety strategies that, that we use to try to protect ourselves when we feel scared. So if, since each of us lives within our own presence and usually our own two patterns, and we never go outside those two patterns, we don't suddenly fall into being inside a different pattern. We don't know that other pattern really exists and we don't know what the world is like from inside that pattern. Mm. But we think that we are experiencing the whole world accurately. We, we think we're experiencing all that there is to experience. We have no idea how much we're missing that people who are caught in other patterns are paying attention to, but we're not. Mm. And they have no idea how much they are missing stuff that we're paying attention to and that we really care about. And they don't mm. care about it. For instance, people who do rigid pattern, one of the five, people who do rigid pattern are very focused on the rules and on performing well according to the rules and the standards and the forms, the, the received rules and forms. But people in the other four patterns don't really care about the rules very much. Right. So if you have someone, you don't realize that you're working with someone who cares about the rules, you may do it, be doing things inadvertently just because you're not those styles. I'm, I'm and, and um, funny enough, um, my, my styles are probably um, leaving and aggressive. And then maybe if I were to pick a third, it would be, I'm not even sure, it's probably emerging of the suit, but the one that is the least resonant with me is rigid. It's the one that makes me go crazy. Like, it's like, yeah. I don't understand, you know, like that, that <laughs> that's <laughs> when, what happens. And not it really is, mother tongue. <laughs> it is not my mother tongue. And it actually makes me a little bit crazy because I, I, it's what you're saying. I don't understand it. I don't understand your language. Yeah. What are you trying to do? Why are you in my way? Please get out yeah. of my way. Why does that rule even exist? I'll give you 10 reasons why that rule is stupid. Like this is, this is, this is. right. Let's say, for example, have maybe something someone thinks. <laughs> and that's what we do. We get judgmental because we don't share that particular safety strategy. Mm -hmm. And the thing to remember about each of these five patterns is each one begins as a safety strategy, a way to try to feel safer when you're in distress, mm -hmm. when you're in distress as a child. Mm -hmm. And, and so, I, I, I no just matter, want to go, sorry. go ahead. I guess part that I don't understand and that I, I was trying to do in my presentation, you said, no, you can't do that, is to map, because um, you were getting rigid with your own work. <laughs> no, but I said, I said, Stephen, can't we map this stuff to like fight, flight, fight, thon? Oh, and you said, yeah. no. It doesn't actually quite map to that. Okay. And no, I, I was trying to do it and it couldn't quite map. to want to. 
Yes. Okay. You understand why I'd want to, but it does. So tell me, so it doesn't necessarily, because the, the one that I couldn't figure out is I thought rigid, is that fight or is it flight? I couldn't figure out where that it fit. Isn't, it isn't any of them. Okay. Yeah, lots of people, I mean, the human mind is a pattern seeking machine. And that is part of our evolutionary biology. It's, it's survival adaptive to find patterns in the environment and understand the patterns, interpret the patterns, learn what they mean. However, that also means that we have a tendency to see patterns when they don't actually exist. Okay. So even though this is about feeling safer and these four yeah. strategies are about survival, these are things that are not, it's not not an actually an, an exact map or even a map. Is that fair to say? Is it? An, is oh, it, it is definitely a map. But the fact that there are five of these does not mean it's a one-to-one -one correlation with anything else that happens to be five. Okay, I got it. Okay, got right. it. I understand. And there are lots of people who have tried, and even published books, trying to correlate these five patterns with um, the five basic elements in, I've forgotten if it's uh, Vedic medicine or Chinese medicine. Yeah, One Chinese medicine has five elements, yeah. Okay. Um, there are people who want to map this onto the chakra system. Yeah. Personally, I'm not convinced that that's useful. Uh, we want to we want to correlate all kinds of things. Okay, I haven't I yet seen any of those correlations that really. Hold <laughs> okay, so let's get back to rigid. So, um, in in the stuff that I've seen from William Reich, you know, they have the rigid. The body is kind of like upright, kind of strong. So, what would a rigid look like in a meeting? So, we're talking about. Let's let's actually let's put a hypothetical situation where we mm -hmm. have to make a decision as a group and there's disagreement. Okay, let's pretend that. Right. What would the rigid right. sound like, look like, a, feel a like? A person who does rigid pattern um, typically has some set of rules, and the the particular sets of rules could vary. You know, the rules of the Catholic Church are different from the rules of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. From the rules of the Libertarian Party, right. different from the rules of the San Francisco Summer of Love. Right. <laughs> right? Yes. So keep in mind, it's performance according to a set of rules and forms, but you got to figure out what set of rules and forms. Uh, okay. So I'm saying, I don't really think that we can do, you know, we can't do this. We can't launch this program in this particular way. So I'm, right. I'm being rigid and, 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 in the, in the physiology that they show, it shows like kind of like a rigid, a rigid body the pressure. Person's it's, body will tend to be more erect and rigid than yeah. most. They're unlikely to be slumping. Yes. But more important, their emotions and their thinking will be rigid. There will be a need, uh, for instance, when any new subject or idea is brought up, to put it into a known category. Every experience must fit into a known category. If it doesn't fit into a known category, the person starts to get uncomfortable. Sort of like you're not allowed to have new experiences. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that just makes me laugh because I'm, I'm thinking of a person. I'm like, oh, this makes sense. So um, I'm not. Uh, so I'm actually saying we should launch this, and so I'm going to think. Yeah. So I might be thinking, oh well, the last launch didn't go. Following mm -hmm. the map, thinking right. of the last launch. The the mind or the attention, the habit of attention. Each of these five safety strategies and five patterns has a a habit of attention, a way that attention is um, automatically, habitually focused or slanted. Mm -hmm. And the habit of attention here is towards the negative. What could go wrong? Where is the mistake? How would we be violating the rules? So in a business meeting, uh, suppose someone is proposing, you know, let's do this whole new thing with the company. 
Um, if you have a person in the meeting who does rigid pattern, that person's attention is going to be automatically going to what's wrong with this idea. One way to handle that is to actually assign them the task of pointing out to us when asked, what's wrong with this idea? <laughs> you know, to say, okay, Bruce, whoever it is, um, if you're, you're in charge to say, um, I know you're good at seeing what's what's wrong or what where we could be making a mistake. So in a little bit, I'm going to ask you what flaws you see in this in this whole idea, uh, but not yet. Let's let's let so and so actually present the idea first. See, so you're acknowledging the person's skill, which is in seeing where the mistake is going to be. Okay, so here's my question about that particular person, mm -hmm. the pattern, um, emotion, because I understand the thinking, like we didn't, you know, my thought is that we did it this way, we didn't do it this time. What's the, what's the categorization of emotion? I, I don't understand that aspect. I don't know what you mean. You said that this person is trying to, like, they have a set of rules or forms, and it can be either, like, their thinking, or they're mapping it to their thinking, oh, or their emotion. Wow. What's the emotion piece? I didn't understand that part. Well, we didn't, in, in a business meeting, there's not likely to be much emotion. <laughs> okay, so what if there were? <laughs> that's funny, Stephen. <laughs> that you think, that's cute that you think that's the case. <laughs> And it turns out I have never worked in a corporation. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's cute that you think that's the case. So, so let me see. I'm, I'm willing to be totally wrong about that. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I can imagine one person saying, well, let's spend $10 million turning the company this way. And another person is going, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what is, a, what is the rigidness and the set of rules and forms well, of the motion? A person who's caught in the rigid pattern has been uh, trained, deeply trained inside to ignore personal feeling, to ignore their own heart, oh. and instead to focus on their performance. Oh. So the, the sort of unconscious belief is you are your performance. Oh. I am my performance. Not I am my heart. Mm. I am my performance. So the performance is what's important. And it's it's crucial that we perform well. Yeah. Doesn't really matter how we feel. Okay, God. So I could uh, so and I can relate to this because even though this isn't my primary pattern, um, mm -hmm. we were trying to get a business project done and mm -hmm. everyone was having feelings and I was like can't you just do what I do as an Asian which is to table all these feelings and just get the work done on time <laughs> so is this uh -huh. this is what you're referring uh -huh. to as um kind of a rigid aspect of my a pattern of my that I'm well, I in think that case. culturally Asian culture as as I understand it as an outsider now um tends to have a certain rigid flavor, mm -hmm. which is, you know, stay in, stay in line. Mm. I mean, when I was visiting um, Japan, I was invited to come over to Japan and teach some years back. And um, I mean, I noticed that like everything is in rows. Everything is perfectly organized. Now you have an awful lot of people in a relatively small landmass there. So it's really helpful that everything is organized. But um, I, the forests obviously were cut down and then replanted in rows. Yeah, you look at the Zen garden, it's like beautiful. It's not that way in Chinese, which is my culture, but I oh, understand okay. what you're okay. talking about. Because okay. there is a rigidness in my Chinese culture it's come from from the Confucius is like the deep, deep part okay. of it, where okay. there's like a set of rules and prescriptive ways that you're supposed to behave with different with senior people, people, equal yes. people, people who there's a rigid, there is a set of rules of which I don't even know how I know, but I know the rules. So that's but there is a set of rules and the rules are really important. 
They are. The decorum is extremely important. None of this free love. No. And and I would guess, you know, Confucianism makes a lot of sense to me, like not Taoism. Oh, it's not Taoism. <laughs> it yeah. was Taoism. There's some aspects of Taoism, but um, a lot, at least the way that I was raised was mostly because my parents, you know, that generation were more about Confucius. So we, exactly. so, so when I'm working with the rigid person, how would I get a sense of the set of rules or forms that they're, because part of it, as you're saying, they are scared, they need to categorize things so they feel safer. Um, what is a way that I can work with them so that well, you can simply observe them, get to know them, and find out what the rules are. I mean, you can ask them straight out, like, what, what's your philosophy of life? Or what do you, you know, what's your sense of, like, how are we supposed to act? And they'll probably tell you something like, well, I was raised Catholic, or I was raised Chinese, or I was you know, they will say something that gives you an idea of whatever set of rules they live by. Mm, interesting. And okay, good. You always ask them because they know the rules. They have the rules consciously in their head all the time. And what does it look like? I know that it's a rigidness. This thing too? Oh, yeah. Well, and a fear <laughs> of making a mistake. Mm hmm uh, a fear of taking any action before knowing what's going to be the correct action, because if we if we act before we know exactly what's correct, we might make a mistake, and we can't make a mistake because that's terrible. Uh, okay, so it has a it has kind of a perfectionist kind of flavor. Very much. Yeah, so it's Very like the, it has this, this kind of this kind yeah. of thing, or or like. Um, I, I would excuse my language a bit. Stick up the butt. This is the the, the posture. Yeah. Well, this is this is what was originally called anal retentive. Yep. In Freudian terminology, you know, tight ass. Yep. Um, and the um, I just lost my. <laughs> what happens with the energy? with these anal retentive tight ass rigid folks, what's happening with the energy? Is it going? Cause part of the, well, part of the expression is. It's part of the clenching all the way up the torso ah. to, um, to restrict the flow of life energy and uh, diminish ah. the feeling in the body. You can't perform real well if you're distracted by a lot of strong, intense feelings ah. in your core. Sort of like you were saying, why don't you put all these feelings aside and just let do the work, right? Oh, that explains everything about my rip, mo most recent body work is I actually have this kind of tightening up. Like yeah. literally, it's like actually my tail curls, tailbone curls down huh? and my sacral just whoop, shuts up because I don't want the life energy because that means energy. That means like emotions. It means dealing with the chaos around me. So if somehow if I just screw the lid shut, <laughs> nothing will right. come up. <sighs> if you just let that energy flow, unplanned things could happen. Uh, <laughs> that explains everything. Even incorrect things could happen. Right. Like you could feel a sexual desire for someone who's off limits because they're married to someone else. Uh, or, you know, you could be married and you, you feel like, wow, I really like so-and-so. Yeah. You could have forbidden feelings, uh, hopes, desires. Can't let that happen. Interesting. So important thing to notice here is the, the whole idea of the inner critic. Mm. The inner critic is the part of us that develops very young that um, basically remembers everything mom and dad and everybody important has said about, you know, good boy, bad boy, good girl, bad girl, do this, don't do that. Don't run with scissors, don't hit your brother, chew your food, Right. ask, you know, permission to whatever. So you've been taught a whole set of rules and your inner critic is very focused on those rules and keeps you to the rules. 
Interesting. Now, for for many people, um, their sense of self is somewhat separate from that inner critic. But for a person who's caught in the rigid pattern, and I use the term caught in or doing, not that they are rigid, but they're caught in this pattern, they identify with their inner critic. Mm. And they have a tendency to think that the inner critic's voice is their own voice. Mm. Not true. Not true at all, but very convincing. Yes. No, I, my inner critic is my mom. And actually part of what I've been doing is releasing the rigidity of the Asian culture and what yes. I learned to do as a child. So this is actually, I relate to it culturally, but a pattern that I go to um, is more um, leaving um, is probably more. So let's pick the next one. What would be the next one? There's leaving, merging, enduring, and aggressive. Which would you like to go with next? Um, the That order, leaving, merging, enduring, aggressive, rigid, is um, they're usually presented in that order because that's kind of the developmental age order. In oh, which interesting. They develop. Oh. Uh, now, again, let's not get rigid about that. It's not an. Oh no, you order. said that. I'm I'm holding it, you to it. <laughs> but, what what age are we talking about for rigid? So we're going. Ow, what's so the rigid? Rigid, uh, rigid doesn't typically set in until the child is old enough to have an inner critic. So we're talking at least two and probably more like three, four, five. Oh, okay, got it. Don't send kids off to school until they have enough inner critic that they can control themselves. It's the first oh. inner control mechanism there is. So they need to have a mechanism that, for instance, they don't just shout out in class anytime. They raise their hand. And, you know, and then the teacher says, what, Jimmy? And they say, uh, right? I see. Got it. Okay. So let's go backwards. We're just going to mess up your world. Um, so let's go. Let's do aggressive. We're going to go backwards. In time. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so what's aggressive? aggressive? Actually, it's going to be easier if we start with leaving. And okay. Let's do leaving. Here. So a uh, leaving pattern typically develops real early could be in the womb, could be shortly after birth. And the, the job then is there's an incoming spirit or soul, depending on how you want to phrase that. But there's some intelligence, there's some awareness that is coming into the physical plane and into this particular body, whether it's still in mom's womb or whether it's already born. And inhabiting this and that incoming intelligence needs to attach to this body and own it, claim it. Mm. That process is called embodiment. Mm. When a person has not completed that step of embodiment, they tend to get separated or it's easy to separate from their physical body and they have difficulty navigating through the physical plane, the plane of time and space. Tend to be late for things, tend to um, get lost easily. And frankly, don't really care about getting lost. Getting lost is fun. Maybe we'll find something new, mm -hmm. right? Yes, <laughs> because I'm that pattern. Yes, correct. <laughs> Say that you, you know, you work downtown or in an office building somewhere and you live somewhere else, right? A person who does rigid pattern will figure out the best route from one to the other and drive the same route every day. Mm -hmm. A person who is more caught in leaving pattern will think, well, let's do something new. Let's try <laughs> something out. I'll just try this other street. I don't know where it'll lead and we'll have an adventure something will happen, right? 
Yeah, so the, how it shows up in a business meeting is I'm like, well, why don't we do it this way? Well, here's another way we could think about this. And I could literally come up with 15 different ways of looking at it because exactly. I, can go, I can go to the meta perspective. I can look at the left. I can look at the right. I can look above and below and I can see all those perspectives because I'm basically and not in my body at the time. Literally, what you just said is you can move your awareness around to different spots spatially mm. that you can view it from above, you can view it from below, from one side, from outside, from inside. This mobility of awareness and the skill of voluntarily moving it is a tremendous skill. Yeah, it's creative, it, creative, creativity. It gives a person great creativity, um, vision, tremendous at being a visionary, seeing a new way to do things, actually going to other dimensions and getting stuff, bringing it here. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. remember the film Amadeus, you've got Mozart lying in bed sick and he's just downloading music and he's dictating it to uh, Salieri, who's writing it down. And he's not laboring over figuring things out he's just downloading, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Tremendous talent. Mm -hmm. Another example of difference between rigid pattern and leaving pattern. Say you've lost your car keys. Yeah. A person who does rigid pattern is going to go back to the last time they had their car keys in their memory and then they're going to walk forward minute by minute, second by second. I went here and then I turned left and then I went there and then I went up the stairs and then I went around the corner and then I came in the door and then I put my hand in my pocket and then until they find out where they left their keys. Yeah. Right? A person who does- um, Leaving. Pattern and a person, keep in mind a person, many people do both because people do two patterns, you may be one who does both rigid and leaving, who knows? Um, a person who's more focused on leaving pattern or more caught in leaving pattern has a different relationship to the universe and the, and the world. So, okay, everything's alive and I can communicate energetically, psychically with everything. Mm -hmm. I just stand in the living room, close my eyes and I call out to my keys and I say, hello keys. Where are you? Speak to me. Oh, I'm going to try that. I've never thought to do that. And maybe you get a message says, you know, I'm over here. I'm in the couch. I'm... I have this thing called um, phone, find, phone finder. That is what I do. <laughs> That's equivalent <laughs> to the leaving thing. Very right, helpful so, for a phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what I do if, if I'm in a meeting um, and people were having conflict, what I tend to do is pull in. It's like pull in and go out. And so if yeah. you were look at me in a meeting, it's like, I'm, it's like, I'm not even there. I'm there, yeah. but I'm not there. That's yeah. what it would look like in a meeting. Yeah. And if you said, CJ, what do you think? I'd be like, wait, where are we? Like, I'm, I haven't even been engaged. Exactly. In you would have to come back to your body to be able to operate in the physical plane. Yeah, I'd say, what were we talking? Repeat the question again, and then I'd have to. Yes. Then, then I'd be like, okay, here's the answer. <laughs> and even though I hadn't been listening to anything, I'm sort of listening. Well, your your awareness had gone to a different time and place. Yeah. For yeah. safety, and that's the way to tell for a person to figure out to discern which patterns they do is to learn about the patterns and then watch what they do as they go into distress. Starting yeah. from feeling safe, what do you do? Do you leave? Do you get rigid? Do you try to connect with people? Right, so if I'm, I'm a person who, so all of a sudden you see CJ, she's left the meeting. What would you do to bring me back? I would say, CJ, hello. Oh, hi. And I, would welcome, I would wait for you to come back. <laughs> right? Not I mean, necessary to engage in shaming you for not yeah. being here. Not useful. Waste of time. Yeah. But okay. 
and then say something like, did you hear that last part? Yeah. Because maybe you did not. Yeah. If you didn't say, okay, so Sally said, maybe we could do X, Y, Z. What do you think about that? And how do you make me not scared? Because so here, here, you know, like Sally and Bob are right. screaming at each other, and I'm like, I'm, 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 okay. I've left the room. So there's a conflict going on, and your way of trying to feel safer is to get the hell away. Yeah. Leave the room physically, or leave the room energetically. Mm -hmm. Leave this time and space. Mm -hmm go somewhere else. So what do you do for poor CJ when people are fighting and CJ's like, you know, in Hawaii sitting on a beach? <laughs> yeah. So help the person come back, make it safe. So if you're the one communicating, if you know, you're trying to help the person come back, first of all, you want your contact to be light. You want it to be warm, heart-centered or head-centered, not belly-centered, warm, kind, maybe loving, mm. not, not too personal, little general, little abstract, little more ideas than feelings, but definitely uh, light touch kindness say got it got Not it okay intense. okay all right so now let's go to merging yeah so a little older the child is probably already born and this was originally called the oral pattern mm -hmm. has to do with the nursing stage mm. and the what the child is attempting to do this this developmental stage here is about taking in taking in milk, nourishment, and taking in love. Mm -hmm. Taking in, holding, filling up, and digesting what has been taken in. Mm. So if a kid is able to do that, they learn, oh, if I need, I just ask and I get, and then I'm full, and then everything's great. The problem here arises, the person a person who gets caught in this pattern is a person who wasn't able to complete this particular task, mm. just like leaving pattern person wasn't able to complete embodiment. The, so the task here is taking in. So the person wasn't able to take in and hold and digest. Maybe mm. as a child, they were allergic to mom's milk. Mm. Maybe mom was terrified. Maybe it was during the war and there were bombs falling, right? Or um, mom had discovered that her husband was actually a mafia hitman and it didn't feel safe. And she was right. like terrified all the time. Uh, there could be all kinds of reasons that sort of aren't anyone's personal fault, but the child can't take in the food, the love, the nourishment, hold it, digest it, and really benefit from it. Maybe mm -hmm. the kid keeps throwing up. Um, but then so how does this show up in the meeting? Like, if, so we're talking about different ideas about the launch. It, does it look like, oh, I think that's a great idea. Well, I also think that's a great idea. I'm like, well, what the hell do you think? Because those things are two diametrically opposed things. Exactly. So the, the safety strategy is to connect with people and try to get them to give you what you need to solve your problem. Mm. So, whereas with leaving pattern, the safety strategy is to leave. And with rigid pattern, the safety strategy is to get rigid and focus on performance. With merging pattern, the safety strategy is to connect with others and merge with them. So the person is going to look, they're gonna be very focused on being personal, on being heart-centered, they may actually be clingy. Mm. There may be a sort of a constant, um, almost dripping of emotion, mm -hmm. like, you know, very easily um, offended or hurt or 
tendency to, you know, get weepy or get hurt or get like, you shouldn't say that to me or something like that. Yeah. So my client has someone who's a merger and I was explaining to her, she's like, I don't understand. She talks to one person and then all of a sudden that's what she's taking on. She talks to another person and that's what she's taking on. I don't even know what she stands for. So then she comes to us and she is like, actually doesn't take on our ideas because she's made so many commitments to these other people and she's triaging in some way I don't even understand. There's no vision, no. there's no mission. I don't know what her vision or mission is and I don't know where she's going. So she feels unsafe to me. Right. The person is trying to stay connected and liked by every single one of these other people. Yes. So like if you think of a high school analogy, um, it would be like with the cheerleaders, the person is a cheerleader and is like happy and perky. Mm -hmm. And with the, um, with the, the um, smart kids, the, you know, the straight A students, she's like being smart and straight A. And mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the kids who take drugs, she's, you know, smoking dope and getting smart. Like whatever the group is doing, the person does. Right. So there isn't actually a strong felt sense of core inside. Mm -hmm. And the person has learned to disregard their own feeling state mm -hmm. and instead focus on the feeling states of the other people and connect with those. Mm -hmm. to try to see whoever you want me to be. I see. So one of you. So how, what, so this, this person who I am um, working with is an endurer and she is having conflict with someone who's an emer emerger. So you have these two different types. So like, and I, like I said, she's like, what do you stand for? I don't understand. Like you, I, I, uh, like she just doesn't even know how to work with this person. So how yeah. do you work with the person is not clear because they have lots of feelings of which may or may not be there. They're merging with everyone. So as a manager, you just trying to get them to be clear because when she tries to get this person to be clear, it almost causes more conflict because she can't, she doesn't even know what she thinks. Right. It's an amalgamation of everything. So is it better to just say, what do you think the general public thinks? and she can give you all the different perspectives or what's the best way to use her gifts? Right. Uh, this is a reason that people who do this pattern like frequently don't want to be the CEO. They don't want to be the leader. Mm. They want to be a support person, uh. right? So they can join the general group feeling. Right. Um, and are good at being a support person. Mm. Um. The, uh, as you said, the, um, the way out of this is for the person to develop a strong felt sense of their own core and then become able to reference their own core, to reference themselves and find out, well, what do I feel? What do I want? What do I need? The problem is that goes against everything the pattern says is the, the way to safety because now if if it's like well i want this but you want that now we could have conflict oh, oh i see you might not like me now mm -hmm. terrible yeah right yeah and there are two forms of this pattern it's the only pattern that has two forms mm. there's the simple version which is what we've been talking about and then there's the compensated merging form and the compensation is like an attempt to solve the problem of not having a, a felt sense of core and the sense of will and strength that comes. Remember, this happens usually before two years old. Mm. And it's right around two years old, maybe 18 months, when a child first has um, will and strength come online. Uh, I see. So are they trying to merge with the people in power? Is that the? Uh, yeah, the, the people. And this is true. I mean, if you're if you're one year old. 
You yeah, you're merging with mommy and daddy. On other people. Yeah, yeah. You can't do it for yourself. Uh, interesting. I mean, okay. accurate read. You need them to do it for you. You need them to give you food and wash you and burp you and help you downregulate your system to go to sleep. Uh, you can't do things for yourself. And then with the compensation, which, you know, some people tend more toward the simple merging pattern, others more toward the compensated merging. If we think of the simple merging, merging as being the baby in a baby mother dyad, mm -hmm. compensated merging is more like being the mother. So it's, I will be the one who is big and strong and I will take care of you. It's still all about our connection. Oh, still I can all about caring, But it's now I'm the big one and I will take care of you. I see. Got it. Okay. Interesting. All right. So that, so the next is enduring. So I told you my client was enduring. Um, are we okay on timing? Yeah. How long do we have? I think uh, we have two more patterns. So um, I, I'm okay with timing if you yeah, are. Yeah, I'm okay with, with the time. Okay, yeah. good. So tell me a little bit about enduring. So, uh, yeah, so now we are- Oh, wait, and actually, let me ask you a question. The um, merging, what does it look like when you're in a meeting? I mean, I, I know what it sounds like. They're just kind of like always like being friends with you, but what it, is there a certain It'll kind of- agreeing with everybody on everything but it's not it's actually having a, um, a personal position, uh, like you said. Okay, but there's not a specific look or body posture like the- uh, The body posture, it, it tends to be sort of more rounded, more soft, more uh, um, actually a little bit more like a baby's body, more like the Pillsbury do Doughboy. Oh, interesting. So- uh, um, the, the, the other way this can go is the person's body is thin and sort of emaciated. Mm. But I think it's much more likely that the person is um, a little bit overweight. Interesting. Okay, got it. A lot overweight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it now. So sometimes um, I've seen people who have this personality type. I think they have the purse lips. Oh, yeah. You yeah. see the wrinkle pattern. It's like this purse lips thing if you watch closely sometimes you'll see a person go into distress and it's almost like they start nursing they'll start going <laughs> wow <laughs> it reminds me of mr lipid do you remember that guy <laughs> donald knots and like a little fish interesting okay yeah, yeah. um but it's nursing uh -huh. okay all right so i think of an... <laughs> leaving and merging pattern are both before two years old. Okay. Before will and strength come online. Mm -hmm. And then enduring aggressive rigid patterns all develop after will and strength come online. So enduring and aggressive patterns have to do with will and strength are here and the kid wants to do what they want to do, not mm -hmm. what you want them to do, mm -hmm. right? Important difference. So one way to think about it is the aggressive pattern is the kid who won all the fights. Mm. The enduring pattern is the kid who lost all the fights. <laughs> now there might be different reasons for the winning and the losing, but with enduring pattern, typically the parents or the people taking care of this child are over controlling. Mm. They're invasive. They may be actively humiliating. Mm, mm -hmm. It, you know, the kid learns um, that no matter what they do, they can't win. Mm. That's exactly what my client has said. So if you can't win, you change your strategy from trying to win to trying to avoid losing. Mm. And the way you avoid losing is you don't play the game. You don't invest. You don't try. You don't take a position. You don't take an action. You don't express a feeling. Mm. Right? No personal self-expression. 
no self action. Well, she's a mix of both because she's very expressive. She's a lobbyist. But what I did notice is that um, people who I've noticed, I have another client who, and it's a, um, they feel it all in the gut. This, she, she, it's kind of like a gut, it's like someone who takes the gut punch, you know, and it's yeah. like this kind of, yeah. it's like yeah. this curled over, like I took the gut punch and you can see them in meetings. They're just kind of going, it's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like they've been punched, uh, pulled in the energetically, the the thing the person does to try to feel safer is to pull their energy in from if you imagine a person has a bubble of energy around them mm -hmm. to pull it all in to actually inside the skin line and send it down, mm -hmm. down into the lower body and even down into the ground below them. Mm -hmm. This allows the person to hunker down and hide and let the storm blow over and not be affected. Oh, okay, got it. And this is exact. So when I said to, we were talking in the beginning of COVID and she said, I've had to take lots of salt baths. <laughs> I said, how come? <laughs> and she said, because I'm taking on everyone's toxicity. I just take it on. If people were fighting, she's just like, and she just, yeah. she literally puts it in her stomach and it actually makes her feel sick her she has a lot of, i think yeah. the other client i had a lot of digestion issues because they're just all stomaching the negativity uh -huh. and the conflict they're just digesting boom, boom, oh, right in the stomach the, the other client who does more merging pattern uh the client uh, yes she's an enduring person and she's and she has conflict with the person who's the merging pattern yeah merging pattern tends to somaticize things Yes, because she's like, yeah, why do you have to emote so much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're always and, emoting. Yeah, enduring pattern pulls it in, hunkers down. And the, the skill that's developed so strongly is the skill of grounding. Mm -hmm. Now, grounding, again, is a tremendously useful skill. Mm -hmm. Just like feeling your core is a useful skill. So a person who does enduring will have some sense of core but a lot of sense of ground. And they frequently then find that they're in a group, they're in an office, they're in a meeting and nobody is grounded here and they have to ground the whole group, mm. which is a tremendous gift to the group. Mm. In an office situation, people frequently notice, you know, they say, well, like if you're in the meeting, everything goes fine, but if you're not there, it's chaos. Right. They're the anchor. They're the anchor. They're bringing everybody down, calming things down. And do they do that off? by taking the energy in? Is that what they're, so they're grounding everyone by helping everyone go in. They're going in, but is it the well, limbic resonance that they get other people to go in or what's happening? Or are they it's energetically being connected to the earth? Hmm. Now, it sounds like your client doesn't actually send the energy down into the earth and let the earth deal with it. It sounds mm -hmm. like she tries to do it herself. Mm -hmm. This is too big. This is not a good, not a healthy choice. Mm -hmm. All this human emotion can be channeled down into the earth and the earth loves it. It's fine. The plants eat it up. Mm. You know, human jealousy and anger and rage and pain and heartbreak and all it's food for the plants. Mm. Yeah, right? this it's and stress. It's a lot of stress. And stress. It's food for the plant, but it's not good for any single human being to be trying to hold all this in their body. Mm. I see. Okay, so it's really about grounding. So merits in a meeting this person is probably going to be like come on how does this relate to our clients how is this actually going they're kind of grounded in the practicalities of what's happening in the particular meeting they it seems like what i've noticed with the bo body types is they're more like their their bodies are grounded into the earth like they almost oh, have yeah. like a, a lower center of gravity like there's a exactly the pulling energy in and sending it down means that there's, as a child growing up, there's more life energy in the lower half of the body than the upper half. And that wherever there's more life energy causes that part of the body to grow physically larger. Yes, 
That's exactly what I see. But they seem rectangular. There's also this, it's like a. Oh, remember, people do two patterns. So if it's, if, for instance, a person who does um, enduring pattern and rigid or enduring pattern and mm. leaving pattern is likely to be more pear shaped. Oh, oh, that's interesting. A person who does. Uh, enduring pattern and aggressive pattern, since aggressive pattern does the opposite, brings the energy up in the body, shoulders, chest gets bigger, stronger, bring it up, throw it out at people to dominate them. Now you've got, you know, big energy in both ends of the body. Rectangle. Ah. Rectangle. And that's the, that's the configuration that's best for like weightlifting. You uh. want all the muscles to be big and strong interesting right. okay so the enduring the the enduring person is the person you want in the meeting to like ground everyone into the meeting like probably ground them into the practical matters of the day like well when are we supposed to ship this we can't do all five of these things leaving it, it pattern with your creative ideas to give the person who does enduring patterns supposedly they know some supposing they know something about grounding to give them the assignment of helping everybody ground themselves at the beginning of the meeting because Ooh. not really their job to ground everybody else right okay got it to right? help it yeah to and model they that present having to do that for all you people who don't ground yourself right <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's the enduring so that's so to make them feel safer what do you do so their focus is on space <sighs> on having a safe space. And this is radically different from most other patterns. Mm. And so in order to, um, to deal with them effectively or understand them, you need to shift your awareness from things to the space between things. Mm. Instead of objects, in an empty space, put your attention on the space between objects. Mm -hmm. Now this will take some practice, mm -hmm. but it will shift your awareness. You'll become aware of an aliveness in the space itself that's quite different from the objects that inhabit it. Yeah. And then with a person who does enduring pattern, what they are not doing is protecting their own personal space. Mm, right, they're, so th they're not holding a strong edge, probably. They're not even occupying most of their personal bubble with their own energy. They've pulled it in. Mm, what you've got to do is respect their space. Mm, Don't invade it. Don't send your energy into their bubble. Their bubble goes out two or three feet on, on all sides, above and below, front and back, about as far as your, your hands can reach, mm -hmm. right? Other people who have a tendency to invade, people caught in leaving pattern will invade by like going in to figure out how they work inside. We'll just pull them apart and see, disassemble them and see how they function. People who do a um, merging pattern will send in tendrils to connect. It's like, yeah. how just, are you today? What's going on today? Right. I'll just send a little, a, a little tendril from my heart to your heart. So we're connected. So I know you love me. So then we're okay. <laughs> People who do rigid pattern will be. <laughs> You know, like checking, are you doing it the right way? People who do aggressive pattern just tend to occupy everybody's space all the time anyway, because I got to keep everything under control. Uh, it's sort of like a bulldozer flattening all the ground just because I want it flat. So a person who does enduring pattern is used to living in a world where everybody is goddamn in their space. Yes. They want them out. If you want this person to listen to you, to pay attention to you, first rule is don't invade their space. Yeah. 
you've got to become skillful then at controlling your own energy. <laughs> okay. Keeping your attention at home. You want to ask them a question. You want to make a request. You do not send it directly into the core of their body like you would with a person who does aggressive pattern. Mm. That's the way to interact with them. With a person who does enduring pattern, you do not aim it right into them. You aim it off to the side. Interesting. Outside, a little farther than they can reach. Imagine there's a whole bubble around them with a big do not disturb sign on every side. You just, it's like, imagine a teenager with their room and the door is closed. <laughs> And there's a big sign that says, no admittance. You just take your stuff to the door. You put it down in front of the door and you say, I'm leaving something here for you. And you walk away. You take Yeah, it. okay. So I get it. But I have a leaving and enduring child. So if I leave it there, if I leave it, he's just be like, whatever, I forgot about it. Because I didn't say... I'm leaving your lunch right here. And it's like, I'm not even hearing you because I'm in a different world and I'm not allowed to go into the room. So then the lunch gets cold. <laughs> okay, so the lunch gets cold. So then he eats a cold lunch. But to work with gets... a person like this. First of all, remember, they don't want you messing with them. <laughs> yes, this is true. Right? This is a difficult relationship when you are the parent and it's your job to keep them safe. So you say, okay, I'm leaving your lunch here. It's warm now. You know, if you want it warm, now would be the time. And then you turn and walk away and take your attention with you. Don't leave part of your attention <laughs> on them because they'll feel it. <laughs> this explains so much. This explains so much. Okay. Thank you very much. You've just resolved many issues that my son has with me, and I think I understand it more fully. Okay. How about aggressive? <laughs> how about aggressive pattern? Okay. So here we have the kid who won the fights. Mm -hmm. And the, this is a kid who had a natural capacity, a talent, to run a great deal of energy through the body, more than the average person. Mm -hmm. And this person learned that if they just run a big current up their body, <laughs> going up, up into the upper body, collect as big a charge as possible, and then throw it at other people, you can bash them into compliance. You can <laughs> coerce their compliance by just hitting them hard enough, either energetically or physically or verbally, right? <laughs> I'm almost crying. I so much do this. It's awful. I'm a combination of leaving and aggressive. Those are my two okay. patterns. Okay. So it's like, Okay, so we've been on the phone for quite a while trying to resolve this issue. May I please just talk to your manager because it just doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. This, this hypothetically could be a conversation that you hear me saying. Oh, yeah. Yes, so it's, see, it's kind of like this aggressive, tight, like I get my jaws tight. My eyes look like people say to me, you look so intense, like you're going to bore through my soul. <laughs> It's like an I thing. You will do my command. <laughs> it's just like, I'm sorry. It would be like this. I'm sorry. Are you telling me that you can't blah, blah, blah? <laughs> it looks like the boring through your soul, the jaws, the the mm -hmm. shoulders back, ready to like beat the crap out of you <laughs> or strangle you, ready to lunge at you. Yeah. So this is the, this is aggressive. I under, I understand this part and it's funny and um, uh, it's painful. Um, <laughs> just, just hear you describe it and, so fully. And like each of these patterns, it's a habitual conditioned reaction when in distress. So a person who's caught in aggressive pattern uses aggression 
when they're in distress, whether aggression is a good choice here or not. Mm. Just like a person who's caught in leaving pattern at the moment will use leaving, whether that's a good choice or not. A person who's caught at the moment in merging pattern will try to merge and connect, even if that's not a good choice, mm -hmm. right? All of these skills can be the best choice in some particular moment. Mm -hmm. And if a person is able to be present, not caught in a pattern, they can apply whatever skill is the best one for this situation. Ah, uh, I see. Because because right? I can relate to all five all five of these. There's not even oh, yeah. necessarily because yeah. you want to be well well versed at being able to deal with conflict in different ways. So whether it's leaving, you know, trying to merge with the person, enduring, aggressive, these are all like perfectly fine coping mechanisms to deal with stress around you. Yeah. Each of these patterns requires that you um, learn and practice a particular set of skills and that you learn to do it so well that you can actually make it work a lot of the time. Mm. So you develop that, those gifts. These skills are all wonderful skills to have for life. The problem is when a person is caught in pattern, they will compulsively apply the solution of that pattern, even if it's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. For instance, the old analogy of, you know, in your toolbox, you only have a hammer. So to you, every problem looks like a nail and you just bash it. Yeah. Time for to be aggressive. Not that, that would... it makes sense to be aggressive, <laughs> but it, so when, oh, what yeah. happens with, um, so you talked about the rectangle with aggressive enduring, um, aggressive emerging, is that, is that even a combo? It happens sometimes. It's less common than most combinations. And aggressive and leaving, is that a combo? I mean, that's oh, yeah. my combo. Oh, yeah. And what, what, um, what would it look like? I had a friend, like? for instance, who did uh, leaving pattern first, primary, and when in great distress, he would switch into aggression. Um, his wife, did rigid pattern first and in great distress, she would go into aggression. Uh oh. <laughs> so when the two of them were having a fight, but it was a small fight, he would be trying to get the hell away from there. And she would be trying to nail him down and get him to come back and answer the damn question. Right? Interesting. And then when they would reach a certain threshold, they would both flip into aggressive pattern. And now, it's a fight. It's right. like big deal. Bring out the big guns. Interesting. Right? And with a person who hasn't done a lot of inner work, you can often see this change from one pattern to the another, from their primary pattern to their backup pattern as a real stark change in behavior. Yeah, I'm leaving too aggressive. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to like vacate because this is kind of stressful. And then if you just keep on escalating, escalating, I will get aggressive. It's like, yeah. you know, like the, the dog. That's just at, like at some point, it it's time to take off the gloves and I will just beat you into submission. Okay. So that's basically. The question becomes, how angry do I need to get for you to do it my way? Okay. So you're working with someone who's aggressive. Like they're, like you said, it's a, how do you thanks work for, with that person? Thanks for bringing me back to that. So the the main thing that a person who does aggressive pattern is watching for in other people is their core. Are they in their core? Mm. If the person, the person in aggressive pattern has a very strong developed felt sense of their own core. Mm. They are not good at feeling other people's core, knowing what they feel and what they want. Person who does merging pattern is terrific at that, but missing feeling their own core. Mm. Person in aggressive pattern feels their own core, doesn't feel anybody else's. Mm. So the person in aggressive pattern is really good at feeling their own core and they check that it's sort of like they ping other people's core to see, are you there? Can I trust you? If push comes to shove, can I depend on you? 
Are you really going to be there if this gets to be a fight? Mm -hmm. Are you a worthy uh, warrior, a, a worthy adversary, or a worthy, you know, fellow warrior? Can can I depend on you to protect my right mm -hmm. flank? Mm -hmm. So there's an unconscious sort of mm -hmm. thing. I think of it the way that um, a submarine will send out a, a ping to yes. get the reflection back from the other sub, like where are they and how far away are they? I think of it as sort of like that. A person who does, or who is caught currently in aggressive pattern does that. And if they can feel your core, it helps them relax inside. If they can't find their core, they can't find you and it makes them hard makes it hard for them to even hear you and certainly makes it hard for them to think that whatever you're saying is important. Oh, this is history. fascinating. That makes sense because a lot of business people have aggressive. I, I'm, I'm going to make oh, yeah. a, a wild statement and say that. And when I'm coaching um, and I coach people at high tech companies and they're very aggressive, very dynamic, it's what makes those companies great. And the first and it's couple of reported in that system. Yeah. And then what happens in the first couple of sessions, it's this like intellectual battle where I have to like, they're kind of, are you smart? Do I trust you? And if I don't, and I'm going to like basically be aggressive, downright unfriendly sometimes when I'm coaching with them. It's like yeah. this yeah. before I know that I can trust you. And it's this, it's this, do you, are you, have you found your core so I can trust you? It's exactly, exactly. that. So you automatically will shift into aggressive pattern to meet that. I, I do. And, and it's exhausting. Reassurance. Yes. So it's like, oh, we're, uh, so I, I actually said to my friend, I'm like, oh, we're doing this. Okay. So bring it on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bring it on. Let's fight. It's sort of like <laughs> there, there are some young men, you know, typically sort of working class guys who um, who go down to the bar on Friday nights and um, they meet a new person, the first thing they need to do is fight with them. Yeah. Would well, you want to yeah. fight me? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. okay, if you can really hold up in a fight, then I'll respect you. Yeah. Then we can be friends. Yeah. But unless you can put up a good fight, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Oh, this is just so, so the for other people who don't do aggressive pattern is that they have to practice the skill of core, mm. be able to come into their own core and speak from their core directly to the core of the person who does aggressive pattern. Well, it no. seems like the simple solution is if we can be grounded all the way to the earth, be in our core, we're solving most of these issues. <laughs> right? I'm not floating right. up to the sky. Core, I'm ground, ground, strong edge. Yeah. Those, those are the first three energetic skills and everybody needs them in order to uh, be a healthy adult. Strong edge is like a boundary that's not like pulled in. It's actually right. a strong edge. Like it's an energetic edge as different from a psychological boundary. Psychological boundaries are important too. And a lot of people have written a lot of good books about those. That's well known in psychology. The problem is you also need to have an energetic edge because that's a filter that keeps other people's thoughts and feelings from floating into your space and filling you up with their junk. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, it's, that's my growing edge. Feelings and needs and wants and desires and hopes and dreams are all in your space. Then when you check inside here for like, what do I feel? You can't figure out, well, what, what's mine and what's somebody else's stuff. Yeah, for. yeah. Right. But if you have a strong core, you can actually go, that's me. I don't know what this other stuff that kind of is filtering in, but I feel something filtering in that I don't understand and I'm confused. Yeah. People who don't do aggressive pattern and don't have such a strong core, like if a person does leaving and merging patterns, oh. not much of an edge, not a strong core. So there's like a lot of thoughts and feelings and ideas in here, but I don't know what's me and what's not. Uh, and that's where the problem comes from when you say, well, what do you want? And they go, oh, I, 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 I don't know. 
Well, how about rigid? Because if rigid isn't grounded and they're not, they have a boundary, but right. they're not grounded. Right. And, and I, so, I, where's their power coming third, from then? Third way of referencing. We talked about referencing your own core. We talked about referencing other people's core. What do they feel? What do they want me to be? Third way is referencing the rules. Oh, so you don't know so what you're, oh, wow. The person who does rigid pattern is not referencing themselves. They're not referencing the other people. They are referencing the rules. And then they're behaving according to the rules. Wow. So they don't have the inner core. They have boundaries, but are set up by this external set of rules. And do they have grounding? Because they don't. if they're not connected to the earth, no. they have no grounding. Not core, not ground. There, there is an edge, but it's a rigid edge. And it's not, not it's familiar. not, and it's not their energy that's occupying, or is it their energy that's occupying, but the boundary is external? It, it is their energy, but it's directed toward the goals that are approved by the rules. Wow. You know? Wow. Okay, this explains so if much. It's, if it's the rules of Catholicism, then I'm a good holy person. If it's the roles of libertarianism, it's then, you know, every man for himself and I'm gonna walk on your face. Right. If it's, you know, the rules of the communist party, then it's like, we're all in this together and, you know, we we work collectively. Interesting. So as long Those as the rules are in sand, oh, wow. Oh, this is just so, so fascinating. The, so what set of rules is crucial, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah, the, I like the energy part, the yeah. performance is according to the rules and the person has a very deep conviction that, you know, what I feel and want doesn't matter. We just, I have to do what's needed, what, what the rules say. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I get it from my Asian culture. It's like, I got, if I want to live, I want to be part of this family, I must do these. I mean, literally people in Asian families, they disown you if you don't follow the rules. I mean, that's how rigid it is. So interesting this explains yeah. so much yeah this explains so much about physical issues that i've had emotional interactions with other people so incredibly yes. helpful thank yeah. you so much now you're going to be teaching you have a webinar that starts on um january 19th and people can right. go to the spelled out the five personality patterns.com right. and go Same. up and sign up for your Google newsletter the five yep. personality patterns and um, and then also the class starts on February 9th. So then that's when they can take the class. And how it's a it's a how many session class? It's a seven, a seven session, seven week class, live class, 90 minutes per class. And we will go over each of the patterns and we'll spend a whole class on, you know, if the other person does today's pattern that we're studying. Here's what's going on with them. And here's what you need to do in order to communicate effectively with them and successfully with them. Interesting. Okay, so th this is your appetizer version today. <laughs> this is, this is an appetizer the version. appetizer version before the webinar, which is probably another appetizer version. Thank you so much. So My great. My pleasure, CJ.